Welcome to Electron Online. In the previous video we saw that there's two components to the angular momentum. There is the orbital motion of the electron contributing to the angular momentum, but then there's also a spin concept. I call it a concept because we don't want to confuse it too much to an actual spinning object. But there's another contributing component to the angular momentum. We call it the spin component. So what exactly is it? What exactly is the spin angular momentum? So, let's take a look. First of all, the spin angular momentum never changes. S equals to one half. And now we're talking about the electron, of course, here, because we're also going to talk a little bit about some other particles. So it's a fixed quantity and it never changes. Remember, the angular momentum can change as the value for L changes, and the orientation of the angular momentum can change when the magnetic field is applied, and there's, of course, different values for M sub L. But in the case of the spin angular momentum, there's just one specific value for the electron, and it, it is S equals one half. Now we'll learn later that there's actually what we call a spin flip, so there can be two, what we could consider, orientations of that spin, but we'll talk about that later. Secondly, there's no good classical description of a spinning electron, and this is important because we like to think of it as the electron actually spinning on its axis, like a baseball could be spinning on, it, on its axis, but that's not the case. It is some property that we call the spin, and it does contribute to the angle of momentum, that's why that word spin is used, but it's not to be confused in the classical sense that it's actually something that's rotating on its axis. So we'll, we'll look at that a little bit more as well. And then finally, the spin angle of momentum is also quantized, just like the orbital motion angle of momentum, the spin angle of momentum also has quantized values, and it's calculated by this right here, S, the capital letter S, uh, where do I have it defined here? Oh, right here, is the spin angle of momentum, and the small s used here is the spin quantum number, so the small s is the spin quantum number, the large s is the spin angle of momentum, and is defined by this, H, times the square root of n over 2 times n over 2 plus 1. Where did that come from? Go back over here and we see that s is equal to h bar times the square root of s times s plus 1, where s is equal to n divided by 2. Now, this is not to be confused by the principal quantum number. n is simply just an integer, 0 or positive, not negative. So it's a non-negative integer. So when when n equals 0, s equals 0. When n equals 1, s is 1 half. When n equals 2, s is 1, and so forth. Now, therefore, instead of writing it in terms of the spin angle of momentum, we can, we can write it in terms of the integer n, and if we do so, we say that the what we call the spin angle of momentum is h bar divided by 2 times the square root of n times n plus 2. So, theoretically, the spin quantum number could be one half, three halves, five halves, and so forth for particles called fermions. Those are basic particles consisting of either leptons or quarks. And that's just theoretical because in practice we find that all elementary particles actually have the spin quantity as one half, not three halves or five halves. And then bosons are particles that have spin angle of momentum of 0, 1, or 2, or I, I shouldn't call it spin angle momentum, I should call it spin quantum number 0, 1, or 2. And again, bosons consist of either photons, gluons, W or Z bosons, and so forth. So we have S equals 1 as a typical for bosons, S equals 1 half as typical for all elementary particles. So we just kind of look at the whole picture and think there could be other values there, but it turns out that most particles we find for elementary particles, we have S equals 1 half or S equals 1 for bosons. Now let's go ahead and assume that if N equals 0, that integer number, then of course S equals 0, the spin quantum number, and S, the spin angle of momentum, is 0 as well. But if we let N equals 1, then S equals 1 half, so therefore now we're talking about all elementary particles, including electrons, they have spin quantum number one half. That means they have spin angle of momentum of the square root of three over two times h bar. That comes, of course, from plugging that in here. If n is equal to one, one times uh, one times three is three. So we have the square root of three over two, which is what we have over here, times h bar. And then for bosons that have spin quantum number equals to one, 
when n equals 2, notice that the spin angular momentum is the square root of 2 over uh, the square root of 2 times h bar. Now, what's interesting about this, even though these particles are extremely tiny, there's a very large contribution, relatively speaking, by the spin angular momentum. Matter of fact, it's kind of in the same ballpark number-wise as the contribution of the angular momentum due to the orbital motion. And when you think about it, that an electron orbits 6.6 .6 trillion times, oh no, not 6.6 .6 trillion, but 6.6, 1,000 .6, trillion times per second around the, the nucleus of an atom, the spin angular momentum contribution is about the same magnitude as an orbiting electron. So we need to kind of figure out what that actually is. What does it really represent? We'll try to figure that out. But in the meanwhile, at least, we're able to calculate it. We have a fairly good idea what it is. It's simply a contributing component of the angular momentum. We call it spin. It is evident that it exists when we send hydrogen atoms through a magnetic field when the hydrogen atoms are in the ground state, so there cannot be any change in the direction of the angular momentum because it doesn't have angular momentum. So we know it exists. We think it's a basic property of a particle. It never changes under any circumstances. It's a contributing component to the momentum or the angle the angular momentum of a particle of the electron in the hydrogen atom. We just don't exactly know what it is. But we'll try to get more clarification on that as we explore that concept a little bit more. But at least we're able to calculate it and we have kind of a fuzzy idea about what it is and at least we know it exists. And that's what we mean by the spin angular momentum.